Okay, tonight we listened to Richard Gates, and he basically presented about a thousand people here in the audience and about two thousand people on the video stream about his findings of how the buildings of 911s collapsed. Richard, in, in about 140 characters, how did these buildings collapse? They collapsed by controlled demolition. That's what the evidence shows. That's what 2,300 architects and engineers that I represent are calling for a new investigation about. We have freely flying, laterally ejected st structural steel members landing 200 meters in every direction. Yeah. We have missing floors at the bottom, uh, 110 of them that should have been there, 90,000 tons of concrete that's been pulverized, hot, molten iron found under... Could never have done by a plane basically entering a building and basically collapsing them this, that way, the official explanation. Yeah, not at all, especially since Building 7 wasn't even hit by a plane, dropped in seven seconds at uh, free fall acceleration straight down into its own footprint the afternoon of 9-11 yeah. after having been, an, well... An Not it, even touched by a plane, just got some, uh, got some secondary damage. Okay, you basically have been spending two hours making that uh, presentation. It's on the web, we're not going to go after that. When did you basically get this thought that you wanted to go after the, 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 the truth and basically investigate it? When, what year was that? It was 2006, and I heard David Ray Griffin on the radio, and he was giving this evidence. And I'm going, well, I, wait a minute, I'm, I'm for the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Yeah, you're and a Republican, right? Yeah. A Reagan Republican. Yeah, flag-waving. Yeah. Flag -waving. yeah. Um, and yet uh, here was all of this evidence that we were lied to, that, that these towers were blown up. So Yeah, and, but also and this happened in 2001, right? I mean, and in 2006 you basically thought, hey... What about this? This doesn't work? It took you five years to basically get into this? I guess so. I had never heard any other alternative explanation as to how these towers came down. That was, that was it, 2006. So I knew I had to do something because he made sense. I went to hear him uh, that night in Oakland, but they were sold out. There were 600 people there. I couldn't even get in. Mm -hmm. So I had to listen to it on the, on the, on the live stream. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I had to do something, right? There was no, I mean, there, there were uh, 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 scholars for 9-11 Truth, pilots for 9-11 Truth. There were no architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. These are buildings. Yeah, but listen, you're minding your own business. You're an architect. You're building stuff in the San Francisco area. And then you basically, you know, slowly change your life around and now you're basically going to 30 cities in Europe. I mean, how does a change like that come about? I'm not sure, but something drove me to have to do something to wake these people up. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it was, it's like in the Army when they ask for volunteers. Everybody else just kind of steps back, and there I am in the front, because I'm not really qualified to do this. Well, this is, I think as a presenter, you're doing really well. So how is it? You have now been busy for nine years on this, on this quest, going on this tour. How, uh, how, lo how long was it before you spent your whole life on this, your whole, all your days? Four years. I, I, I continued working as an architect during the day, doing the power presentations on the weekends and putting them together at night and going to meetings. Mm -hmm. But eventually, when I, especially when I started traveling around the world, uh, it just became, I just got too busy. I couldn't work anymore for, for other architects. I mm. just had to do this full time. So we went, we got, we turned in ourselves into an organization mm -hmm. and uh, we now uh, have enough money from members uh, to... So these 2,000 architects and engineers are funding your organization? You, how, how do you well, get your money? Well, there's 20,000 others that, uh, some of, many of which, a thousand or so, support us with two or five euro per month. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so a small amount of money to build, basically. Yeah. So how, is the, how has your message been received and how is it developing your, the reception in, these, in the next in the last five years? Well, it's, it's increasing. Uh, we're, we're more able to go out and do more things because we do have more members. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we, we, we did get on C-SPAN addressing 3 million people in 45 minutes in what's become their most watched video on the Washington TV program, Washington Journal TV program. Mm -hmm. uh, we got on uh, uh, Geraldo Rivera at Fox News, showed Building 7 coming down, had our engineer on, had a family member on, uh, Bob McIlvain, who uh, convinced, I think, millions of people that there's a problem here. Even Al Raldo himself said, wow, yes. this is impressive. But how is it possible that this kind of stuff takes 15 years? And that here we are in the Netherlands, 
we had a little bit of debate about if you could be accepted in a university like this to give a presentation. That was the biggest thing. Not about the subject, but if you are allowed to speak here on a university. Why are we having such a problem listening to a story? And why is it so difficult to get, uh, to get it into people's head? The implications of 9-11 being controlled demolition means that we're talking about some sort of an inside job which means it has to be planned, implemented, uh, and then covered up with the media. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a level of complicity that wide and, and that high is staggering to the mind. It's very, very difficult for us to, uh, to, to digest mm -hmm. uh, how deep and, and, and complete this systematic yeah, it control unbelievable. is. So many people should have been involved. That's just in, in a country where everybody talks it seems completely impossible. Well, that's, that's why it's so hard. Yeah. That's why it's so hard to, 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 to yeah. get our mind around it. That's why we have eight psychologists in our DVD, 9-11 Explosive Evidence Experts Speak Out, talking about just that. Mm -hmm. we, we just cannot get, uh, uh, we, we cannot allow ourselves to be so vulnerable as to have something so big, uh, uh, authority, uh, elements within our government clearly uh, be complicit in mass murder okay. and uh, control uh, a, a, such a, a systemic basis. It's, it's, it's in, it seems it's outlandish. Yeah. Yeah. Give me now a scenario how you have it tried in 2010, you had a big action, you had big signs and everything, you, know, you had a lot of people trying to speak out, uh, billboards. Um, that basically got some attention but not enough. How will this play out, your quest? Will you be doing this for the next 10 years, or what is, what is your strategy? Fair question. I didn't think it would take me more than six months, because <laughs> we have the evidence, as you saw. Mm -hmm. uh, the evidence is clear. It's convincing, but not everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. And not and fewer people will come to even look at it, much less see it once they do look at it. Yeah. Most people do see it. Yeah. Most people end up con convinced. And but it took to much longer than you expected. Yeah. yeah, and, and so and it could take a lot longer till we reach critical mass. When is that happening? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. We're pushing a large rock up a big hill. Yeah. We, don't, we can't even see past the rock to how big the hill is. If the conspiracy is really that deep, and if the stakes are so high, this is all being set up to basically justify the war in the Afghanistan and even Iraq, would you be not in a very difficult, dangerous position? Because if you are becoming a problem, if you have millions of people believe you, wouldn't you be a little bit, you, wouldn't you be annoying and sitting in the way of some people who would just make you go away? Well, um, they haven't even called me yet, so <laughs> I, I, I guess not. You're not irritating enough yet. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a, I, I wish we were, frankly, I'm, I, but it, it just hasn't, I guess we haven't been enough of a problem yet, or maybe all of a sudden we're too... Uh, well known to do anything about. You, you know? feel powerless uh, by having so much evidence and so much conviction that you basically, that, that people don't listen? I... It's the sales. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what? <laughs> do you feel powerless that you basically have the, you have the idea, you have to as an evidence and people are not listening? Well, uh, 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 some people are listening, which is why we're doing 20 stops in 10 countries in 30 days. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a thousand people here or so. Yeah. Uh, so we have enough of an audience to keep us uh, doing what we need to Inspired. do. Inspired. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I wish it were three, 10 times, 20 times, 100 times. That's what is needed. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's going too slow for our comfort level. Okay. We don't know what the forces are. Or the, I mean, when, when you when you plant a seed, it doesn't grow automatically. It takes always more time. Okay. It takes more always takes more time than we ever imagine it would take. And this is one of those. Yeah. Richard, thank process. you. Thank you. Thank you.